Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh episode of Ukraine War Uncovered, podcast about the war in Ukraine. Today is for 188th day of the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine. My name is Pavlo and my colleague is Anna. We are Ukrainians and co-hosts of this podcast. In this podcast we will uncover facts and stories about the war in Ukraine, some of which you may not hear from the mainstream media. We will provide you with key weekly updates about the war based on information from the ground, connect with eyewitnesses and experts directly from Ukraine, and share stories of wartime life inside Ukraine and stories of temporary displaced people. We will also uncover Ukraine, its culture, language and history for you. Now moving on to this week's topics. We were away for a few weeks due to a change of the studio location. Today we are in a new studio and we thank H3 Studios and Business Post Group for their continuous support. Previously we announced a different topic for this week's podcast, diversity of Ukrainian army, life LGBTQ plus people and treatment of women and adjustment for vegetarians. But due to the events of June 6, we had to postpone this topic. So, in this episode, we will cover the catastrophe on the Kachovska Dam, focusing on the consequences of the terroristic act, the response of the war, a lack of it from the Russian side, and the devastating effect on locals and wildlife. In the third episode of this podcast, we discuss the environmental damage caused by Russian full-scale invasion to Ukrainian soil, rivers, Black Sea, and local wildlife. At that time, the total number of reported cases of environmental damage exceeded 2,300, and the estimated cost of the environmental damage was about $51 billion. But in the middle of the night, between 2 and 3 a.m. on the 6th of June 2023, there was an information that Russian forces blew up the Novokakhovka hydroelectric dam on the Dnipro River in the Kherson region, southern Ukraine. As a result of that, on the right bank of the Dnipro River, Ukraine controlled her son area, around 60,000 local citizens were under the risk of flooding in the area of 80 villages. Local government cut off the electricity and initiated rescue mission all over the area. The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant allegedly was not that endangered, despite its close proximity to catastrophe. However, the risk cannot be excluded because the dam's reservoir also provided water for the cooling of the six reactors of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest of its kind in Europe. Now the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant might be in jeopardy. According to South Defense Forces spokesperson Natalia Humenyuk, she commented on the undermining of the Kachovska HPP. From the type of damage, it is obvious that it was not missile struck. The detonation took place from the inside, according to her. Russians decided that now, in this way, they will be able to stop the counteroffensive of Ukrainian forces. Russians are trying to increase the area of the water surface, so the Ukrainian defense forces do not resort to forcing the river. At the same time, this means that the line of fire position of the Russian military will move and the Kherson on the right bank of the Dnipro will become a little easier in terms of their shelling. The New York Times confirmed that the internal blast is the most likely reason for the dam destruction, relying on the conclusion of experts and engineers. Now, we decided to structure all data into four blocks to make the chronology of the event nice and clear. We will firstly address the stats and key points on the affected households and locals, and then we will turn to the response of Russia and the rest of the world, we will conclude with the effect of the dam destruction on wildlife and local nature. Now let's move to affected households and locals. As of 7th of June, 1,560 people were evacuated from the controlled part of the Kherson region. Ten settlements were flooded, including 1,852 households, said the head of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, Klimenko. As of the end of 7th June, 2,000 people were rescued and three found dead, four children were severely injured. On 8th of June, consequences of the terrorist attack at the Kachovska HPP, 600 square kilometers of the Kherson region are underwater, of which 32% is the right bank and 68% is the left bank. The average level of flooding is 5.61 meters. On the right bank, 20 settlements and 2,629 houses were flooded. Almost 2,000 people were evacuated. During the day, the water level in the Kachovska reservoir decreased by almost a meter. 
On the 8th of June, Zelensky visited affected Kherson areas to assess the situation. On the 9th of June, the main points of the day. In Kherson region, 48 settlements remain flooded, 14 of them in the temporary occupied territory. More than 2,400 people were evacuated, at least 4 dead and 13 missing. 23 settlements were flooded in Mykolaiv region. 825 people were evacuated. One person died. On the 10th of June, 27 people are considered to be missing, according to Ihor Klemenko from the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. On the 11th of June, 4 meters in, is the average water level in the affected Kherson areas. 46 villages are considered to be flooded. 3,821 households are still inaccessible because of the water levels. On the 12th of June, it is known about eight people died as a result of the Russian detonation of the Kahovska HPP, said the head of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, Klimenko. Another 42 residents of the Kherson region are considered missing, including seven children. 13th of June, it was known about 10 dead and 41 missing, with 3,653 households remaining flooded. As of 14th of June, the water level fell by another 32 centimeters and was 2.13 meters at that point. 28 settlements under the control of Ukraine remain flooded. To conclude, a total of 2,782 people were evacuated in the Kherson region and, one, and 716 were saved from flooding, including 30 children and 40 people with reduced mobility. They also provided psychological assistance to 401 people, launched the work of 14 evacuation points, pumped out more than 22,000 tons of water from 88 houses and basements, involving 68 motorized pumps. 49 tons of water, including 36 tons of drinking water, and 4,495 kilograms of food and basic necessities were delivered to people in Kherson region. As of 26 of June 2023, the death toll from the Kahovska HPP bombing has risen to 48 people, but real numbers of deaths might be much higher given the extent of flooding. Now moving on to the response of Russia and the rest of the world. So Russia's response. According to the Ukrainian intel, in the occupied Holaya Pristin in the Kherson region, the Russians evict the residents of two-floor buildings and set up a firing position on their roofs. On June 8th, Russians launched missile attack on the points of rescue on the Ukrainian control bank of the river, injuring nine people. Later, Russia dared to appeal to the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice with the accusation against Ukraine for the alleged destruction of the Kahovska HPP. On June 10, according to Ukrainian intel, in the Kherson region on the left bank, the occupiers allow evacuation only to Ukrainians with Russian passports. In addition, the Russians are evicting the residents from the surviving houses in order to place their military there. On June 11, the Russian army attacked a boat with civilians evacuating from the left bank in the Kherson region. They opened fire on the civilians. Six people were injured. They reached Kherson and were hospitalized in medical facility. Doctors are fighting for the lives of those wounded. As to the world's response, on June 7, Erdogan, the president of Turkey, suggested creating a fact-finding mission involving the UN, Turkey, Ukraine and Russia to investigate the explosion. Latvia issued 200,000 euros to Ukraine to help deal with the consequences of Kahovka catastrophe. France pincelled 10 tons of humanitarian aid to Ukrainians affected by the dam destruction, according to Emmanuel Macron. On June 8th, the UN said that they will send humanitarian mission to the Russia control bank of the river. Now the UA waits for the permission from the Russians. Meanwhile, Ukrainians in Kyiv organized a protest by the UN building there, appealing to the UN's inaction in response to the explosion. In the near future, Ukraine will receive assistance from NATO within the framework of Euro-Atlantic Coordination Center for Response to the Natural Disasters to overcome the consequences of Russian undermining of the Kahovska HPP dam. This was announced by Petro Kuleba following the urgent meetings of the Ukraine-NATO Commission. Greta Thunberg tweeted that the ECHA site as continuation of Russia's unprovoked full-scale invasion of Ukraine is yet another atrocity which leaves the world lost of four words. Our eyes are once again on Russian who must be held accountable for their crimes. On June 10, the UK committed to providing $20 million to the humanitarian NGO that are helping locals of the affected Kherson area. 
Speaking about wildlife and nature, Ukrainian NGO UA Animals communicated with the management of the zoo Kaskova Dibrova in occupied Novakakhovka. They confirmed that the zoo was completely flooded and only swans and ducks could escape. The person they spoke to, name was held for security reasons, said, We tried our best to keep the zoo under occupation. Now it no longer exists. Although some animals that were not in the zoo have survived, the office of the president of Ukraine reported that at least 150 tons of machine oil got into the Dnipro. There is a risk of further leakage of more than 300 tons. Ukrainian volunteers worked really hard to rescue around 400 animals and af- after 24 hours from the explosion. As of 8 of June, 28,000 fish died in the rivers of Kherson area, causing 7.6 billion hryvnias of damages, as reported by the local council. As of 10th of June, Andriy Yermak reported that as, as a result of the Russian terrorist attack and the destruction of the Kachovska HPP, 30% of the natural reserve fund of the Kherson region is currently under threat of disappearance. June 11, specialists of the state environmental inspection recorded an almost three-fold desolation of water in the Black Sea near Odessa. Overall, beaches in Odessa were full of household remains from Kherson dead animals, including deers and others, as well as dogs floating on the remains of furniture. Moving on to the updates from the front line. During the past few weeks, Ukraine officially started its counteroffensive to liberate occupied territories, as was confirmed by the President Zelensky. 10th of June 2023, Ukrainian military regained 1.4 kilometers of the Bakhmut direction, as reported by Sergei Chervater, spokesperson of the East military. 11 June 2023, 68th Separate Brigade announced the liberation of Blagodatne village in the Donetsk region. The 7th Separate Battalion, RA, announced that they liberated the village Neskuchne, the Donetsk region. 11th June, the Ukrainian armed forces that occupied Makarivka in the south, there was an advance of from 300 to 1500 meters, Deputy Minister of Defense Malyar said. In the direction of Mahput, the troops advanced 250 meters. 13th of June, the 5th Brigade published a video of liberation of Makievka, Donetsk region. Over the last year, the advance of the armed forces in the Berdyansk direction was from 0.5 to 1 km. The area of the occupied territory was up to 3 square kilometers, the Ministry of Defense reported. There is also an advance of up to 250 meters on the Bakhmut and Toretsk direction. 14th of June, Hanna Malia reported on the success of the armed forces of Ukraine over the past day. Bakhmut direction advanced from 200 to 500 meters. Zaporizhia direction, the troops advanced to distance of 300 to 1500 meters. In the Berdyansk direction, fighting continues near the village of Makarivka on the Mariupol direction. Fighting continues in the district of Novo, Danilivka and Novopokrovsk. 15 June, the armed forces of Ukraine advanced over the enemy at a distance of up to 1 km. The area of the city of Vugledar, as reported by the Press Center of Defense Forces. According to the Institute of Study of War, Ukrainian forces continued counteroffensive operations on at least three sectors of the front. Russia's forces' ability to conduct offensive and the defensive operation in Ukraine does not appear to have been substantially impaired by Wagner's June 23-24 armed rebellion. Ukrainian mayor, main military intelligence director Gur had Kirillo Budanov warned on June 23rd that Russians has finished preparation for an attack on Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. A Russian sabotage group attempted to cross the international border into Sumy region. Russian forces continued limited ground attacks near Shvatov, Bakhmut, and along with Avdiivka, the next city line. Russian and Ukrainian forces conducted limited ground attacks attacks in western Donetsk and western Zaporizhia region. Russian sources claim that Ukrainian forces maintained position near Antonivsky Bridge in the Kherson region. Russian occupation authorities continue to weaponize policy regarding children to consolidate social and administrative control of occupied areas. To sum up, during the week between 17th and 25th June, Ukrainian Defense Minister Hanya Maler said, over the week, as a result of the improvements in the operation, tactical situation and the alignment of the front line, the area of the liberated territories has increased by 17 square kilometers. In total, since the start of offensive, the liberated area in south is about 130 square kilometers.
now let's move to weekly news update. On 10th of June 2023, over the night, Russians launched eight missiles and 35 shahets, whereas Ukrainian Air Force Defense shot down two missiles and 20 drones. Particularly, they hit a block of flats in Odessa, killing three people and injuring 26, including three children and a pregnant woman. On 11th of June, Ukrainian Paralympic football team won the Euro 2023, beating England's team in the final 3-0. Ukraine returned 95 prisoners of war from Russia Federation, including members that participated in the helicopter rescue missions to Azovstal that we covered in one of, of the previous episodes. On June 12, the Ukrainian railway provider Korzalizhnitsya launched the first few female carriages to enhance security and reduce harassment risks. They were sold out immediately. On the 13th of June, overnight, Russians launched 15 missiles and four Shahed drones. Ukrainian air defense shot down 11 and 1, respectively. Particularly, Russians hit a block of flats in Krivy Rih, killing 12, including a 17-year-old, and injuring 35. 14th of June was declared to be the day of mourning and commemoration of those affected. On the 14th of June, overnight, Russians launched 10 missiles, Odessa and Donetsk, and 10 Shahed drones. Ukrainian air defense shot down 3 and 9, respectively. In Odessa, Russians hit the warehouse of the mall and the business center, killing 3 and injuring 13. Just to add a short comment here, I was working in this business center when I was a student. On the 15th of June, following the pattern, Russians launched another four missiles and 20 Shahed drones over the night. Ukrainians shot down one missile and all drones. In Russia, a so-called trial in brackets over Mariupol defenders has started, as reported by AP News. All of them can be imprisoned from 15 years to the lifetime sentence. Another Rammstein meeting was held in Germany. As a result, there have been made several important commitments. Canada will provide Ukraine with 288 air-to-air -air missiles for sky defense, 10,000 artillery shells, thousands of rifles and ammunition worth $500 million. Canada will also continue the training of Ukrainian soldiers and pilots and will take part in the maintenance of Leopard 2 tanks in Poland. Denmark, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom and the United States announced cooperation in supplying Ukraine with missiles for air defense systems. Denmark plans to transfer an additional 2.94 billion euros to the International Fund for Ukraine over the next few years. On the 16th of June, Russians launched a missile attack on Kyiv with 12 missiles and two drones. While the South African president Cyril Ramaphosa was visiting Kyiv, Ukrainian air defense shot down all of them. On the 24th of June, as a result of the Russian attack on Kyiv, fragments hit a 25-story building in the Solomansky district partially destroying the building structures on the 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th floors of the building with separate fires on the floors. The fire was contained at 4.40 a.m. and extinguished at 6.30 a.m. As a result of the attack, 11 people sustained injuries of varying severity, three of whom were hospitalized. The total number of deaths has risen to five. Eight people, including two children, were injured in a rocket attack in Dnipro. Four private houses were completely destroyed and 25 others damaged. Eight people, including two children, were injured in a rocket attack in Dnipro. Four private houses were completely destroyed and 25 others were damaged. On the 25th of June, overnight, Russian troops attacked a suburb of Zaporizhia. They hit a local business, damaging trucks and nearby buildings. No one was injured. At dawn, the Russian army shelled her son. A shell hit a five-story building. A 44-year-old man was killed. Another woman was trapped under rubble. Over the past day, one person was killed and two wounded in the Donetsk region by Russian shelling. Two people were injured in Zaporizhia and two more were wounded in Kherson. On the 26th of June at night, the Russians attacked southern Ukraine under the cover of her under storm and a powerful storm, the enemy sent caliber missiles and Shahed attack drones from the Black Sea. Two caliber missiles and four kamikaze drones were shot down over this region. One missile hit a warehouse in Odessa region. As a result of the downing, 
The wreckage of the drones fell into an open area and the blast waves damaged windows in apartment buildings in the coastal zone. Moving on to next part, begin the history of Ukraine. On 15th June 1775, Russian Empire destroyed the Zaporizhia siege. The Zaporizhia siege is the capital and the main bastion of the Ukrainian Cossack lands, the heart of the lower knighthood and the center of the Cossacks liberties that existed beyond the Dnipro rapids from the middle of the 16th century until 1775. To provide a brief context, the Ukrainian Cossacks helped Moscow win the Russia-Turkish War of 1768-1774 Returning from the Ottoman campaign, Russian troops led by the Peter the Kelius, over 100,000 people in total, teacher lossly and without any warning attacked the Parisia siege. This came as a complete surprise to Cossacks, a large part of whom had not yet returned from the war or were in the field. Serge guarded a garrison of 3,000 people. The council Hesley, convened by the chief Peter Kalnyshevsky, decided to refrain from bloodshed and lay down their arms. On June 15, Russian troops completely destroyed siege. All property and documents were taken to the St. Petersburg. Now let's move to the word of the week. This time it's a pet of the week. Patron literally means a bullet. Nevertheless, Ukrainians know these words from the name of the dog, Pes. Patron, a famous detection dog of Jack Russell breeds and the mascot for the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. Patron first came to prominence during the 2022 Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine, during which Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky awarded him the Order for Courage for his work in locating and defusing unexploded ordnance left behind by Russian troops. The same month, the Ukrainian Jack Russell Terrier won the Palm Dog Award at the Cannes Film Festival in France, and in November 2022, Patron received the Dog of Goodwill title from UNICEF in Ukraine. In addition, Patron got a lot of attention and some of scratches from top politicians and celebrities. Among them are Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and the British actor and UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador Orlando Bloom. In January 2023, a Patron YouTube channel was opened with an animated Patron staring. The cartoons with English and Polish subtitles were produced with USAID support and in partnership with UNICEF. That's it for today. In the next episode, we will cover the diversity of Ukrainian army. We will talk about the life of LGBTQ plus people and the treatment of women and adjustments made for vegetarians. Stay tuned. Thank you for being with us and see you next week. Actually, hear you next week. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes.